Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I am going to show you five home decor dupes that each cost less than $5 to create. This is part of the five under five DIY challenge and I will explain a little bit more about that as we get into the video. If you enjoy crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like any of the projects in today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I love the look of this little frosted glass lantern from Kirkland's and thought I could easily recreate something similar with this glass little jar that I found at Dollar Tree. Now this does have this little twine around the top of it and so I'm going to leave that rather than try to find anything since it's all kind of like a one-stop shop thing with this if that makes sense. So I'm just using my little heat tool to remove that sticker from the bottom and then I'm just going to wipe it off and get it all cleaned up. I will also take this little twine off now because I'm going to frost the glass on this little lantern. I will be replacing that once this process is done. So there is a little bit of glue on the sides of the lip of the jar there, so I just use my heat tool to get that completely cleaned off so that way the glass is completely clean. To frost this, I'm just using this Rust-Oleum Frosted Glass Spray. I have never used this before, so this was the first time, and I absolutely love the process. I just took this out into my little spray paint studio in my garage. It's just a giant box that I have, so it doesn't get all over everything. And I just give this about three really light coats. I just go in just a typical spray paint motion, you know, just little small bursts, stay about 12 inches away. Let it thoroughly dry in between each layer. This is so satiny, the finish is so beautiful. It is so smooth and I love how this turns out. This is definitely a hit and I will be using this frosted glass from Rust-Oleum much more often. This is not sponsored or anything by them. I just ended up really liking this product. So I'm just going to replace this little twine back on here and I am going to have that little handle um, get that put into place as well. So I just use a little bit of glue. That's how it was originally affixed to the jar. So after I kind of get all of my measurements down here or kind of I don't really measure anything. You guys know that. I just kind of eyeball it. And then I'm just going to hot glue where I want the pieces to be. And then I will be able to have that little handle to hang my lantern from. After I have glued into place where my little handle is, I'm just going to wrap around the rest of that twine and I will just kind of tuck the pieces under and glue that. You can kind of watch how I do that here if you decide to recreate this. Now, if you wanna go for the same vibe and you don't wanna spray paint it, you could easily just go look for this lantern at Dollar Tree. It would be super cute. Of course, I found that on Kirkland's and then I saw this at Dollar Tree and thought, oh my gosh, this is the perfect opportunity to try and frost glass since I've never actually done that and I just love how it turns out but you can kind of see I'm just going to tuck that back under now I could have easily gone and thought of something else to do to make more of a wood type of handle on this but I thought it was just easier to do it this way and I got the same feel and the same look from this so now I'm just going to take a couple of these little tea lights these also came from Dollar Tree you just pull the little tab out and they light up and I end up putting two of them in there to add a little bit more light Here's a quick look at our inspiration piece that was from Kirkland's. And then here is the piece that I recreated. I really think this turned out great. You're going to get that same feel and that same vibe from this lantern. I love how that frosted spray paint turned out. And this really was just a couple of dollars, which is a fraction of the price from the original Kirkland's version. What do you guys think of this? Do you like how it turned out? Would you try that frosted glass after seeing this? I loved how it turned out. I am so excited that it is the fifth of the month again. I absolutely love hosting this five under five challenge with my good friend Missy from The Crafty Cove. I am excited to introduce you to our guest host this month, Christine from DIY Craftaholic. She is amazing. Hop on over to her channel, give her some love, subscribe to her channel while you're there. She is so talented and does such amazing DIYs. You're going to love her. I'm going to have a link for the playlist down in my description box. I'll also have a link to Christine's channel down there. So make sure you check that out. This month's theme is decor dupes. We have some fall decor dupes in some of the channels that are participating this month. We have everyday decor dupes. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you check out that playlist link down in my description box. Thank you again so much for your support in this challenge that I host every month with Missy. We absolutely love doing it and we love that you guys get so much inspiration from it. Now let's go make some more DIYs. 
I got this little bucket at a yard sale last summer and I've been waiting for a wonderful project to use it with and I'm so excited with how this turns out. Green is not my color so I am going to spray paint it white. You can use one of these little buckets from Dollar Tree if you'd like. It does have the raised letters so just know that. So after I wipe this down I will just spray paint it with white and I wanted to do a Hobby Lobby. I've seen some items that say farmhouse local on them so I just wanted to Google images and found an image that I like and screenshotted it and then I printed it on water slide decal paper. I'll leave a link to the paper down in my description box, but it was kind of in this rusty writing and I really liked how it turned out. You'll use this clear gloss after you print your image and you'll spray two coats on the water slide decal paper. You can kind of see this shine there that it gives it and that just protects your ink. Then you'll just cut your image out to whatever size you would like it. I'm just showing you that it was in the middle of the paper and I just cut it out and I kind of detail cut it around the words there. And I'm just deciding which side is the best to place it on. And you'll just get some water. This is just like lukewarm water and you're just going to place it down in. Now it's going to curl up. It's okay. Just let it curl up because it's not going to stay like that when it gets on your paper. But you let this soak for about a minute, minute and a half or so. You'll just take it off and it's just going to slide from the backing. And then you're just going to place it on your item and you can leave the back on it until you place it down and then just kind of slide the back out from underneath it. I just chose to slide it off right there because it was starting to come off and I just find the spot that I like and you just start pressing it down. You will notice that there is some kind of like adhesive or glue or stickiness on the back of this little um, water slide decal and that's what's going to adhere it to your item. So I'm just taking a paper towel and I'm just moving the water from the outside or from the inside to the outside. So I'm just kind of removing any bubbles. I'm pressing down to absorb any water and then you still have room to slide it if you need to slide it either direction or anything like that. It, it's very easy to use and you have a lot of wiggle room to kind of get it just precise and exactly how you want it. So you're just pressing down, removing any uh, air bubbles or anything like that, making sure that there's no wrinkles or anything like that and that you're drying it off. And then you're just gonna let it sit for a little bit to completely dry. Then I am just taking some Mod Podge because I do want this to have a shimmer. The spray paint I used was kind of a chalky finish and that paper, since I sprayed the, sprayed the clear coat on it, is shiny. So I want this all to match. So that way I'm trying to make it so you can't tell that there's a decal on the front of this. So I'm just going over with some clear gloss Mod Podge and you guys, you cannot even tell that there was like an edge or anything to that. It honestly looks like this is printed right onto this bucket. I absolutely love how it turns out and I love the water slide decal paper. This was the perfect size for a couple of little Ikea plants to sit down in, but how cute would a little strand of beads, uh, wooden beads be hanging out of this? I think this is darling. I love it. Something that you definitely use all year round. I just love the greenery in there. It just seems summer and clean and crisp to me. Have you guys ever used the water slide decal paper? It is a total game changer. If you have not, I highly recommend it. So look for that link down in my description box. I am so excited about this project. I know I say that about a lot of them, but you guys, seriously, this is one of my all time favorite projects. So I'm making a lantern. So I just decided how tall I wanted my lantern to be. And I'm taking, we have the, like these long slats of wood here. So I am cutting it down into 18 inches and I make four pieces in that 18 inch cut. Now you wouldn't have to do yours this tall if you wanted to do it, you know, 12 inches, 10 inches, 30 inches, however tall you want yours is how tall you're going to cut these pieces. Pieces. So I just take my first piece, I cut it to 18 inches. I like to take my next piece, use it as a template of where to cut the next piece. You could easily measure out each piece, which is probably what my husband would tell me to do is measure it rather than use a template, but whatever works for you. Again, that's why I love this farmhouse rustic style is it's rustic. It doesn't have to be super exact. I mean, it needs to be exact enough for things to be able to put together, but I think you guys get what I'm saying here. So I just cut four of those pieces out at 18 inches long. So I just brushed off my wood. It, the barn wood has a texture to it that picks up a lot of like sawdust or different things. So I'm just cleaning it off before I really start working with each individual piece. And then I'm taking just a Clorox wipe container to trace a little bit of a circle. I'm wanting to do like an arch shape on this. And so I just trace that little like half circle there. You could trace the whole circle and then use a straight edge to do a line down. So I'll show you in a moment what that looks like, but you can um, really, if you even just wanted to cut a simple 
rectangle out you could do that I just like the arch look but you can see how that arch is kind of on there and it goes all the way down to the end there and then it squares off so now we're going to use our jigsaw to cut this shape out so I'm just going to clamp my wood so that way it's nice and secure so I can drill my pilot hole the reason that you drill a pilot hole is you have to have something for your jigsaw blade to fit through. Now I'm just showing you how easy the jigsaw is. There's a little trigger on there and that's what makes it go. You can do it as fast or as slow as you want. I'm, I'm encouraging you to not let this intimidate you because honestly, these projects are so simple. And once you do it like your first project with your jigsaw, you're going to go, oh my gosh, okay, that was really easy and really fun. And your mind starts just reeling with all these different ideas of things to make. But I am just using this to cut out the shape and I'll do this on all four pieces. And again, you can go as slow as you want. You can have it go as fast as you need it to, but it's not going to feel like you're out of control. And so you'll use that pilot hole and you kind of have to curve your way around to get onto your line that you've traced and then you'll just kind of go back a different over different ways for the lines I hope that's making sense and you can see what I'm doing but see how I use that pilot hole to guide my blade around so I could get that arch there that's what I'm talking about about there so now I just clamp this so I can get to the other side of it so I will just slide my blade into one of the cuts that I've already made and then just continue on when you get to a corner because you can't do like a 90 degree cut you kind of have to back up a little bit you'll stop your blade back up a little bit and kind of curve it around to get that next corner so you can see how I back that up and I'll curve it around to get on that next line and then I'll come back and get from the other direction and it will cut that corner out I hope that makes sense to you. I just made a window in one of my videos, like a Gothic window. I will leave a link to that down in my description box so you can kind of see that too. I give a little bit more detail on using my jigsaw there. Now that I cut my first one out, I just use that as a template to um, draw a template on the rest of my three pieces for those cutouts. So I'm gonna cut this out on all four pieces. So I just trace, and that barn wood is pretty dark, so I have to trace pretty hard so you can see it, but you can see that line there. I'll just do the same thing with the next four pieces, just cutting each of those out. So I just want to show you how easy it is to go around this curve here. You just want to switch places on your jigsaw so you have control of it with your correct hand and everything. And you can see you just kind of slowly go right around that. And that was sped up, guys. So I mean, I'm doing this fairly slow. Now, when you get your pieces cut out, you're going to look at those edges and go, this does not look very pretty. At this point, I was a little discouraged, but I thought I'm just gonna keep going. And so pull your sander out and sand those edges. You're kind of going to round those edges out, sand uh, both sides, every raw edge, and it's going to soften it and it's going to make it look so much better kind of think like it's going to look like it's carved out of wood. So I did glue all the pieces together and just in the same way that I'm gluing the base on here, uh, but I just took each of those sides and glued them to the other side there and then I just glued the base on. I just used wood glue. I didn't use any nails or anything like that. And now I'm just taking some antiquing wax and I am just kind of using my finger. Again, this is just because I have that barn wood that has that finish and when you cut the raw edge, it's very stark difference. And so I just took some antiquing wax and went over it, went over all of the edges, um, the very top of it where those edges are exposed, I do it there as well. So you could even, if you're just cutting this out of like a regular piece of MDF board, just paint it whatever color you wanted to. That would be super easy, just use some spray paint and that would be super quick as well. You guys, oh my, oh my gosh. I can't believe I made this. Like I, this is easily gotta be like the top three of projects I've ever made. I absolutely love this. And you know what the hardest part is, you guys, is getting over that fear of using power tools. I promise you, once you do a jigsaw project your first time, your world is going to completely change. You're going to love it. It is so easy, I promise you. Please let me know what you think of this lantern down in the description box. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends.
I'm so excited about this project. So I am taking two of these half inch poplar that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's. You can see that they're like $2.10 for each one and I'm using two of them. Now I'm making a little tea towel ladder to go in my kitchen so I can decorate it for different seasons. So that's how I'm making this one kind of spring because you can decorate it for the different like seasons or holidays. So I am just cutting them down. I'm going to put the measurements down in my description box. But when I have to cut a couple pieces of wood the same length that are little like this with my miter box I or my miter saw I just take them and tape them together with painters tape to make sure I get an even cut on both pieces after I have like the sides of my ladder all the way done I'm going to cut the rungs so I cut all three of those and then I am going to kind of space these out measure them with my ruler to kind of see where I need to space them and then how I do it is I glue I just use some Dollar Tree wood glue um, but I glue the top rung on and then the bottom rung before I place the middle that way I kind of can get a good idea of where I want to place that middle one make sure that it's even rather than marking this up with pencil marks because I'm going to leave it this natural wood color where this is going to be in my kitchen and it is going to be around food I didn't want it to have like a finish or anything on there that wasn't food safe so I didn't want to mark it up with a bunch of pencil marks And since I'm not using nails or anything on this, just the wood glue, I'm just using a couple of clamps to clamp this together. Now I only have two clamps that were big enough for this and they were sufficient. So I'm just putting them on a couple of the rungs there you can see and just tightening that up. And then I just let this dry. And I am so excited about this because I love having things like this in my kitchen to decorate for different seasons. So I just put this little tea towel on here to show you, but you could jazz it up with a little wreath. You could hang some cute little things from it, have a rolling pin, up next to it whatever you'd like for the different seasons or holidays but so simple to make I have this bucket from Dollar Tree and I think it's darling the way that it is but when I got home I realized that the handle was kind of coming off so I just decided to take them both off because I didn't really know how to fix that really so I kind of have an idea that I'm gonna do for the handles but first I'm going to take these little stickers they're just like these little raised bead stickers um, and I'm going to run them around the top and the bottom they're super easy to work with and you just kind of get your spacing there they stick very very well so you kind of want to make sure when you stick them down that you know where you're sticking them so they're a little difficult to kind of pull up once they're down but you can see how easy they are and if you have to um, once you get to the other end and you need to take some off you can just kind of pull them and they just rip apart so fun and what I'm going to do is we're going to paint over these and so it will it will look good I promise now I think these buckets are so cute that the way that they are but you know I'm here to kind of give you some inspiration to show you some different ways to decorate things so I don't want you saying like oh the bucket was beautiful before because I know it was but this is kind of fun to make it match your decor a little bit more and make it more for you now I'm just using my crocodile tool and I will link that in my description box down below to make those holes just a little bit bigger because I'm going to use some rope to go through those after I get this all painted so I just go through and I paint this I actually did one coat of chalk paint here and then I actually went out into my garage and spray painted it because those beads are a little difficult to get the chalk paint to stick to now to give it a little detail so you can see that little raised area I just take some elephant chalk paint but you could use like mineral or you could even use antiquing wax and just lightly go over those beads and that's just going to make them pop they kind of blend in if you leave them all white and don't do this step here it would be fine if you did but this is the way you definitely notice them and I like everything weathered and distressed with what's left in my brush I kind of just go over the middle portion of this cute little bucket here I go up and down like the seam and everything just give it kind of a little bit of an aged look like it's had a plant in it and it's gotten a little bit dirty <laughs> and then I'm just going to tape off the end of my rope this rope came from Dollar Tree and I am just going to feed it through and tie it and then I'll feed the other you'll kind of see how I'm doing it here and then just tie it off on both sides just tying that very tight and then I pull it against the pail there the bucket to make sure that it is tight and then I will cut off 
the end and you can see here that I've got that other side I just decide my length I cut it off and tie it and I'll just do this on both sides to give it a something cute something a little bit different for the handle especially since I had the the broken handle on it so this part would be completely optional but I do like how it looks it gives it a very farmhouse vibe this plant is from Ikea they fit perfectly in there if you want them to sit up just a little bit you'd put just a couple tumbling tower blocks in the base of it but I think this turned out so cute and it's perfect for every day you could even embellish the front part of this if you wanted to I kind of like the simplicity of it leaving it like this. Thank you so much for joining me today and watching these five under five home decor dupes. Did you guys have a favorite from today's video? I would love to know. I love that lantern. As I said, it is one of my most favorite projects that I have ever made. I'm going to get so much use out of that. Hopefully you guys like to see projects like that with my jigsaw. I'll keep things like that coming if you like that. So definitely let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more like that. Remember to check out that playlist link down in my description box. You're going to get a lot of fun decor inspiration from all of these wonderful dupes that the other creators have made for you. So definitely check that link out. I'd like to give a big thank you to Christine for guest hosting with us. Check out her channel link down in my description box as well. If you liked any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up and I would love if you would consider subscribing. As always, remember to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.